Hey, what's up everyone? James and Cuervo from Junkyard Fox. Thank you so much for joining us and the weather is finally calming down. Now, we are hitting 100 degrees down here in West Texas already, but we will take a sweltering day over a windy, sandstormy one anytime. We are so sick of the wind. So we're out here, we're scouting the area, and of course it's 100 degrees, so we are uh, cooling off some. And today, Guervo's going to take the wheel, he's going to be in front of the camera, and he's going to be talking about everyone's favorite subject, knives. So last year I did a video called Five Knives That Make Me Happy. It was a knife tag. It was being, you know, going through all the EDC and gear channels. And I foolishly forgot to tag Black Raven over here. So we're going to fix that today. And we're going to turn the camera around and Guervo's going to talk about his top five favorite knives that make him happy. Now, once again, this is more of a sentimental thing. So these are not the top five knives that you got to buy now or they're not chained by statistics like knife steel or anything like that. They could be just knives that he likes because due to nostalgia or adventures he's had with them before or something as simple as he just likes the way they look. You know, so once again, we're going to turn the camera around. We're going to put Guervo in front of it and he's going to talk about his blades. So be sure to... Get yourself a cold one, pull up a chair, and join us. Cheers, brother. So the first knife I'm gonna talk to you guys about is the Memora Black. As old and outdated as this version is, I think it holds a timeless imprint on bushcraft history, at least that's how I see it. And it was the first knife that got me introduced into uh, bushcraft skills and self-reliance and things like that and I think it's uh, it was an important it's an important uh, aspect because it's uh, it holds a lot of uh, it holds a lot of sentimentality to me because it was the first time I had not the first time sorry it was the I think it was the second time I helped James film on the Junkyard Fox channel and but the video itself, we were processing a uh, squirrel and <clears throat> we were reviewing the Mora Black. And it was the first time that we used Cuervo Negro music. It was the first time we introduced the music into the video. And it, it was the first time that I ever considered buying a fixed blade. And I remember thinking like, I never really liked these rubber handles. But then thinking back, it's like it, it, it serves as a good, like, um, like they're training wheels. It, it's not so like it, you know, you just hold it. It's got a good grip on your hand. When you learn that the, that the fixed blade isn't just a kitchen utensil, but it's, it's more, becomes more of a, an extension of yourself and how you can creatively use this tool and make from processing game to to processing wood to getting a flint rock and striking it on making a fire so it's providing a number of things and it's just how you use it even to introduce someone to it and i think it's a it's an important piece of history too from the Drink Air Fox channel. At least for me it is. And that's how I got introduced to bushcrafting and things like that. Awesome. And yeah, Cuervo's right. This was a, uh, we filmed a review on this knife very early on in the channel before we were even called Junk Air Fox, before we had a name. And um, it was the first time we put Cuervo Negro music to a Fox video. Uh, so that was like a first time right there with that dynamic, the Fox and the Cuervo dynamic. And one of the first times you jumped on as a cameraman, because be well, originally it was my ex-girl at the time, and then you jumped on. Uh, it was the second time you were on camera, camera duties, and the first time we actually used your music on the channel. So that was the beginning. That's uh, history right there. So if you want a blast from the past, we'll have the link to that video up here. And uh, like I said, very early, I'm a little awkward, the uh, camera and the editing is a little wonky, but uh, the blade worked great, the music worked great, and uh, once again, it's history right there. Alright, so number four is a multi-tool, which is, I think, an unconventional, but I've always been a fan of pocket knives. And 
I remember James had a Swiss Army. I think it was the Trekker. And then he was selling his. And then I remember I was like, dude, I'll just, you know, I'll just buy it off of you right here. Help you out. And once you have your hands, once you have your hands on a multi-tool, you never realize how much you use it until you have it. And how much and how necessary it is when you and when you're in possession of it and so i've always been a fan of pocket knives but i you know you there's always something missing from them there it's always just you know quick action quick cutting and but you never realize how much you end up using all the other tools like the let me close this up real quick like i, I like to work on leather and the ranger wood sorry i'll just mention that real quick the reason i chose the ranger wood is because it has what I need necessarily, sorry, what I need to work with leather and just all around camp, camping um, necessities like uh, chopping vegetables and um, working on a piece of wood or, you know, just general cutting or when it's party time, use the, the corkscrew right there. But I found myself reaching for this tool mostly when I was working with leather. When you have the awl and you're working through a little hole and then, you know, when you try to, when, you're, when you need to make a puncture through it because leather is really tough and you need to put a stud through it or something, whatever, the awl is just perfect for that occasion. And, you know, it, it, it works for everything. And then... I work on my guitars a lot too. There's these things called um, pegs that the guitar has on the saddle. And when you're working on the acoustic, those pegs can get really swelled up because of the weather in your room or whatever, wherever you're at. So the weather, the, the wood will, will swell up. So it'll become hard. And there's a lot of tension between the pegs and the strings. And so um, when you're replacing guitar strings, it's hard for you to pull those out because with the human hand, you can't really grasp it that well. So you, I use this thing, the flathead. You know, it's, it cuts 10 minutes out of your time and <laughs> it opens it right up. And then, yeah, it's party time. Even when you're at home or at a family gathering and they're opening bottles and you know, you're the guy with the multi-tool and you open everybody's bottle. <laughs> so it's it's a beautiful blade. I love the the extension of it. I love the, the length of this blade. I love that it's uh, a flat grind, which is, which is completely opposite from a Scandi. And I love these little grooves right here. And I love cooking, so this guy is, is there with me. And I think the review we did on this thing did it a uh, major justice too. So yeah, the Ranger Wood Swiss Army. That's my number four. And review for that blade will be up over here if you want to check out our official review for this thing. Really awesome Swiss Army knife. So when the number three is the, the Green River Hunter. The Green River Hunter is, I think, personally, I think it's a, it's a well-rounded knife. It's very simple in its design. Even the history it holds to it from its inception to now, I think the, the timeless design, I've always liked this drop point right here and the flat grind. It, it's, just, it's just beautiful in its own way. And I think it's a good knife to have as a spare or even in your kitchen or whatever it's um uh, it's always it's a good slicer you can slice thinly any vegetable slice through sinew and meat and it's just all around very well rounded the only drawback i think it has of course it's the the handle it's very um hard but it's, I mean, you could always modify it and 
customize it and that's another thing I like it's it's an easy knife to to shape and to sharpen to take care of and I always when people always ask me about knives I always either recommend the Moro Black or I recommend the Green River Hunter because it's a you you'll find yourself reaching for this guy uh, more often than you you realize and I think it's a little reminiscent to you know the old cowboy days and it teaches that that importance of like I got to take care of it so it can take care of me kind of mentality so yeah that's the the Green River Hunter Another knife that we have a review. That's three knives in a row that we have a review. So we're going to place the review up here if you want to check it out. Classic piece of American history right here. All right. So number f two, sorry, is the PKS Puko. And the Puko is a favorite, personal favorite of mine. Because it's uh, reminiscent of the bit of uh, the Mora Black. You know, you start off with your training wheels and then you just level up to a motorcycle. And this is my, I'm a motorcycle, of course, but uh, it's my more developed and more primitive vision of uh, a Scandi. And I love that it has the, the pommel, it's a little more extended. I love the wood handles on it I love the blade I think it's a I wish it had it sorry I, I wish it, it reached more down but I I always find myself using this knife more for creative uses which is um, you know working with wood and carving things and it's just all around I mean of course it's not gonna be a good slicer but I'm not I don't specifically reach for this knife when I'm cooking but it I love the this this kind of needle point to it too and these little grooves I don't know if you guys can tell them right there but yeah I just love the all, all around design the primitive look to it and it's just an all-around good knife that's the PKS uh, Puko I'm not sure if they make this one anymore I tried to look for it to link it in your EDC video you know in case anyone was interested in purchasing it and not that we're getting anything out of that we're not associated with Pathfinder at all uh, but I couldn't find it I want to say that the Green Beret moved his stuff to somebody else like he works with somebody else now but uh there's no i couldn't find anything on this knife so we don't have a review on it because they're probably not even selling it anymore but uh yeah i know that Corbel carries this pretty constantly yeah good stuff all right so before we go to number one we're gonna go with honorable mentions so the first one is uh the Moro Constable. The Moro Constable has a bit of both worlds where it goes from a flat grind to a scandy. And it's perfect for all around camp necessities. For, from processing wood to processing game. And it has a good spine on it. It's got a good handle. And I think it's just all around perfect. I didn't consider it in the list because... I show it so often, but I think it's necessary. It's just like how you have a screwdriver in your toolbox. You know, you use it often, but you don't really consider it your favorite tool. To cut short what I'm saying about this knife is we have a review on this knife and the five reasons why the Moro Constable is, is a must in every bushcrafter's kit. Yeah. Okay, so the next one is a gift, was a gift from James Hyde, and this is a Green River knife. It's, it's a little bit different than the, the Hunter. It's got these beautiful wood handles, sorry, and then uh, 
this green inlay in there. It's it's perfect for carving up meat and, and it's just a general good slicer. But what I love most about this knife is the the sheath. You can tell there's there's a handprint on it, and it has these bear claws on it. It's a it's a beautiful detail, and I think it's a it's endearing to know that somebody's thinking about you when they make something, and that's why I think this this knife is a honorable mention. Thanks, James High. And then the last one is the Two Arrows Canyon. It's a lot reminiscent to the Puko, but I, I love this kind of spear tip to it. Don't know a lot of much about Two Arrow. I don't know if they're still working on knives, but I think this is a perfect knife. And if I don't have my Puko with it, and I have this guy. They're pretty much the same, I believe. And uh, yeah, that's an honorable mention. All right. So last but not least is the Woody Smith's Snake Eater. And so the Snake Eater, well, this version of it is a, is a prototype. It's one of a kind. It's between the first inception and the third, and it's the missing link between them. I remember when we were discussing, James and me, about the name of the Snake Eater, the name I came up with it is the Nahual. And Nahual is a Mesoamerican, is part of the Mesoamerican folklore, which is a, their version of a skinwalker, the shapeshifter. And so I thought it was interesting to name it that way because you can see the knife transforms in this area and it goes into a flat grain. And it's got this beautiful pommel right here. The, the name came to be the snake eater, right? So now wild isn't going to stick as well as snake eater, but it's a com It's it represents how we kind of initially initially met too. I remember lending James my copy of Snake Eater, and I, I barely even knew the guy. <laughs> and you know we bonded over the game. We learned about survival and storytelling, and I personally chose these colors because it re well, I love black but it to me it kind of represents the coal and the fire the reason it's number one it's because to me it represents the combination of everything we've learned through our years and in, in our journey through the channel and our bushcrafting and how you hold different knives and you take from one thing and you apply it to another it's kind of like music it's it's musical in some, in some way it's harmonious and it's 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 thin it's a good slicer it's a good carver it's an all-around good piece of equipment to have especially here in the desert so the knife kind of represents the hard work and the the idea and the philosophy we carry in the channel uh, always transforming, always changing, always trying to find new things and and trying to do new things and yeah, so that's what the snake eater represents to me. Okay, folks, so that's about it. Guerbo talked about his top five favorite knives or the five knives that make him happy. He even threw in a couple of honorable mentions. And that's about it for us, folks. The sun is setting quickly, which means we're cooling off, we're relaxing, and we're going to finish our cold ones. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and comment down below. Do you agree with Guerbo's list or maybe disagree? Maybe he's forgetting about a knife he was using a long time ago in camping videos or a review we filmed before. Let us know. There's a few patches left, so if anybody's interested, contact me down below and I'll reach out to you. Yeah, so we still have a couple of Guerbo Negro patches if you want to rock the Guerbo Negro. Uh, comment down below or if you follow us on Instagram or Facebook, be sure to send us a message and that way we can send you one you know, and that's always cool to see the support from our viewers, from our listeners. That means the world to us. So once again, that's it for us, guys. Thank you for joining us on another adventure. I will be camping once more in a couple of days. So we're getting back to camping finally. So 
Thank you so much. Cheers to everyone watching. Cheers, brother. And we'll see you guys next week with another video. Hell yeah. Now go outside and get your boots dirty. Mm -hmm.